Welcome to this Final Cut Pro 10 training. My name is Larry Jordan. This is Chapter 6, Editing. And in this session, I want to give you an overview of the editing process. The goals for this session are to define basic terms, explain the four principal ways we can edit clips to the timeline, illustrate a complete yet simple process of viewing, selecting, and editing clips into the timeline, show you how to review your work in the timeline and provide both mouse moves and a keyboard method for editing your clips. Here's some key concepts I want to explain before we start editing. The project library is where you select a project to edit. The project library is really a database that stores all of your projects. And a single project is where you construct your edit. Remember in Final Cut Pro 10 there's only one sequence per project. The primary storyline is the main track of clips to which other clips on higher or lower tracks are connected. And a connected storyline are mini sequences which are stored on other tracks and used for cutaways, compositing sound effects, and a lot of other stuff. There are four principal types of edits in Final Cut. There's actually more, but these will be the ones you use the most. There's append, insert, connect, and overwrite. An append edit keyboard shortcut, the letter E, adds the selected clip to the end of the timeline. An insert edit keyboard shortcut, the letter W, inserts the clip at the position of the skimmer or the playhead, forcing an edit point and pushing all clips after it to the right. A connected edit keyboard shortcut, the letter Q, places a clip on a higher track connected to the primary storyline clip. And an overwrite edit, the letter D, replaces the selected area with the selected clip in the event browser. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you the first three edits. I have an entire movie devoted to doing an overwrite edit. There's also some keyboard shortcuts that I want to show you. One is Command Left Square Bracket or Command Right Square Bracket. This cycles between open projects. Shift Z fits the project into the timeline window. Command 1 selects the event browser. Command 2 selects the timeline. The letter I sets an in, which is where clip playback starts. The letter O sets an out, where clip playback ends. The letter E edits the clip to the end of the timeline, and the letter Q connects a clip to the primary storyline at the position of the skimmer or the playhead. So let me show you now how to view and select a portion of a clip Edit a clip to the timeline using the mouse or the keyboard. Illustrate the different ways to edit a clip. Review your edit. Delete a clip. Navigate around the timeline and add some B-roll and still images to your project. Let's start by taking a look at the project we're going to create. It runs about 45 seconds and features an interview with Dr. Vint Cerf. Let me play the first portion of it for you now. In the end, though, uh, after I graduated from Stanford, got a degree in math, I went into computing and got infected with networking uh, around God, 1968 at UCLA. And once you're infected with networking, it's all, you know, it's fatal. So I've been networking ever since. I was at Stanford University and I was doing research with one of my colleagues trying to figure out how to build a system that allowed an arbitrary number of computer networks to be interconnected together in such a way that the computers on any one of those networks could communicate with any computer on any other net without knowing anything about the interior path that the packets were taking or anything else. Packets, of course, are the little electronic postcards that the internet sends back and forth. So my job basically was to figure out what's the architecture and what will be the procedures, the conventions, the protocols for that communication. And my uh, partner, Bob Kahn, and I figured this out around 1973 and I've spent the rest of my life trying to make you know, real that vision. Another role that I have at the Jet Propulsion Laboratory, we've been working for the last six years or so on the design of an interplanetary extension of the Internet. It turns out, however, that the little details are different, and the thing that works terrestrially, called TCP IP, does not work very well over interplanetary distances because the delays are literally astronomical. At the speed of light, it's 20 minutes one way for a radio signal to get from Earth to Mars when the two are farthest apart in their orbits. That means 40 minutes of round trip time. It, believe me, protocols that are not prepared for that kind of round trip time delay have to be changed. But we have now a set of standards for this. We're hoping, we being JPL, 
are hoping to have a Mars telecom order, orbiter in or, orbit around Mars around 2009 to support missions for the next decade uh, on the surface of Mars and possibly going to the outer planets. Very cool. Very cool. All right, let's take a look at what we've got. Shift Z so I can fit the entire timeline in here. Now, notice that as I move my mouse across, the skimmer follows me. That's sometimes not a good idea. Sometimes it's nice to turn skimming off. Keyboard shortcut to do that is the letter S. When you type the letter S, now you can move the playhead back and forth and the skimmer doesn't follow. There's a mouse button here. You can do the same thing. When this is blue, the skimmer is on. When this is gray, the skimmer is off. Notice also that when a clip is on a higher track, just as we're used to in other versions of Final Cut, it's always 100% full screen and it always blocks whatever's below it. So this track down here is called our primary storyline. This is the main sequence that we're putting together. Then to that, we link these clips in what's called a connected clip. It's connected to the primary storyline. The reason this is so important, as you'll see when we start to do organization in the next chapter, is that because the clips are connected, as I move one clip, all the connected clips move with it without knocking themselves out of sync. Also, not only can we turn video skimming off, we can also turn on or off audio skimming. So let's turn on video skimming, and notice we don't hear anything. Now I'll turn on audio skimming. The keyboard shortcut to turn audio skimming on and off is Shift S. Notice Shift S toggles this on and off. When it's blue, skimming is on. When it's gray, skimming is off. It's off by default. Just as the letter S by itself turns skimming on and off. S for video skimming and Shift S for audio skimming. Okay, so we now have our basic sequence. We have a sense that the stacking order of the clips makes a difference when a clip is on a higher track. We can see the higher track clip, but not the clips below it. So how do we build our own sequence? Well, let's go over to the project library. It's this icon right over here. And notice that I've created both my original project and a separate project. Now these are actually two different project files but you could treat them as one sequence and another because all projects are stored in the project database that we were talking about in earlier chapters. So while they're not multiple sequences in the same project, it's easy enough to create that concept. For instance, to duplicate a project, just control click on it and notice there's my option, duplicate a project. So I could do a rough cut, duplicate it, continue polishing that cut in the new sequence while holding this in reserve in case I ever wanted to go back to it. Double click this and now we've got a brand new project with nothing in it. Let's go up to the event library and there is our collection of Vint Surf clips. We can open this up just a bit to see what's there. And we see that's Dr. Surf talking about education. We're going to change the size of this by dragging this back and forth, clicking our switch, turning off waveforms and making the clips a lot smaller so we can see what's going on. And then we'll turn the switch back on again. To make my life easier for the purposes of this demo, because I don't want to waste everybody's time, I've gone through and picked the clips I need and flagged them as favorites. You can see the green bar here indicating it's a favorite clip. So we'll go up to this filter pop-up menu and say, just show me the favorite clips. And there they are. Now we'll expand these a bit so I can see what's going on. Set them to about 30 seconds. And we'll make them just a little bit taller. It's a beautiful thing. All right, turn the switch off. Let's take a listen to our first clip, which is, if I roll over it, notice the file name shows up in the top left corner. So I roll over this, and the clip that I'm looking for is when he was infected with networking. Let's put our playhead at the beginning and play it. I studied math when I was uh, in, uh, in college. I knew I would end up doing something in science or technology, and I had been completely you know, absorbed by that. In the end, though... Okay, right there. In the end, though. Now, I could scrub to it, and it's perfectly okay, and I could turn audio scrubbing on, but for me, it's easier just to play it. Science or technology, and I've been completely uh, absorbed by that. In the end, though... That's what I want. So I type the letter J to play backwards. Remember, the J plays backwards, K stops, L plays forwards. We play backwards. What? Well, hey, in the... So he just hits a pause, type the letter I to set the in, the start of the selected area of the clip. 
In the end, though, uh, after I graduated from Stanford, got a degree in math, I went into computing and got infected with networking uh, around God, 1968 at UCLA. And once you're infected with networking, it's all, you know, it's fatal. Okay. Uh, I want to take a little bit farther. So I've been networking ever since. Okay, we'll wait for his head to go back. Now I'm using the left and the right arrow keys. Open your eyes. Thank you. I find it very useful to talk to the monitor because that way they do what I want them to do. <laughs> and they don't answer back. Type the letter O and that sets the end of the selected area. So what we've got is we now have the selected area of the clip that we want to edit down to the timeline. There's multiple ways we can do this, but I'll show you the mouse way first. See these three icons here? This doesn't append edit. It adds the edit to the end of the sequence, even though my playhead is way over here. Watch what happens when I use it in just a minute. This does an insert edit. I'll show that a little bit later. And this does a connected edit. I'll also show that a little bit later. So let's just click this button and notice the clip starts at the very beginning of the timeline and doesn't care where the playhead is located. Hit the home key, spacebar. In the end, though, uh, after I graduated from Stanford, got a degree in math, I went into computing and got infected with networking uh, around God, 1968 at UCLA. And once you're infected with networking, it's all, you know, it's fatal. So I've been networking ever since. Yeah, he says it and looks guilty about it, too. All right, so we got our first clip down. Let's try the next one. And that's in this uh, what he did category. So we'll play it. In simple terms. That's it. There's our in. In simple terms. I'm using the left arrow key. Watching his mouth. See when he's going to start to talk. Type the letter I uh, to set it in. Terms. Uh, I was at Stanford University. L twice to go I fast forward. And he's describing what the internet is doing. Spacebar to stop. Spacebar to play again. Partner Bob Kahn and I figured this out around 1973. And I've spent the rest of my life trying to make you know, real that vision. Out. And I type the letter O. You can type I or O in playback mode, so you do it in real time, or with the cursor stopped, whichever works the best for you to get you the results that you need. Now, I could click this button again, but we've done that. Instead, I'm going to type the letter E, and the clip edits down to the position of the playhead. Use the up arrow key to move back a shot. I said use the up arrow. Use, hmm, what's the problem? Well, those of you with gimlet vision are going to notice that this is a little bit lighter dark gray than this dark gray is, which means this window is selected, not that window. And, as always, you have to select something to do something to it, so the up arrow is trying to do something in the event browser, which certainly makes no sense whatsoever. We want to be in the timeline. So I could click in the timeline, notice how that goes a lighter gray, click in the browser, timeline, browser, you're getting flashes of <laughs> flashes of gray. Or you could type Command-2. Command-2 selects the timeline. Command-1 selects the browser. So Command-1, Command-2, and if you really want to live on the edge, Command-3, and it selects this area over here. All right, so we're going to go back down to the timeline. The up arrow key moves me to the in of a clip. So in of the clip, down arrow key moves to the in of a clip. But I want to hear the edit point. How do I hear the edit point? Hold the shift key down and press the slash key. It's shift question mark. Once you're infected with networking, it's all, you know, it's fatal. So I've been networking ever since. In simple terms. Uh... Now, we're going to do a whole chapter on trimming. So I'm going to call that a perfect edit. Although in truth, I would get rid of that eh at the very beginning. Key points. Notice we're moving back and forth with the up and down arrow keys. That takes us a shot in either direction. We can move a frame at a time with the left and right arrow keys. And I use shift slash, it's the key under the question mark, to preview around the edit point. Okay, so let's take another clip. We'll continue this edit in part two of this tutorial.